All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC call. As you all know, I think, I'm looking at the list of participants and I only see the known the name. So I think you all know the drill. We have to go through. I have to remind you of the antitrust policy as well as the code of conduct. Other than that, everybody is welcome to join and contribute to this call. So with that taken care of, getting the lawyers happy, we can uh, move forward with the meeting. First, I want to start with a bunch of reminders. I will do that until we reach the deadline of those things. Um, well, the, the, the weekly developer newsletter is an ongoing thing. Um, there is the mentorship program. There's still time to uh, submit the project proposal. It's um, you know until March 11, so I encourage you to look into it. It's a great opportunity to uh, get other people on board. And then there is the Hyperledger Global Forum. There's a call for proposals has been sent out and it closes on March 12th. So please do subscribe, uh, submit proposals. Um, So do we have Helen on the call? No, yeah, Helen, yep. I see you. <laughs> hi, good morning. Hey, hi, I'll let you take care of that piece. Oh, sure, uh, thank you so much. I've created a wiki page for the white paper and greenhouse graphic update task force. Um, on that wiki page, uh, Anthony and, and Hart have already uh, indicated that they'd like to participate in this effort. Um, if you or anybody anybody on this, or you know anybody who might want to join us um, as we look at the Hyperledger intro white paper and the greenhouse image uh, graphic, which I know I, I believe has been brought up before about uh, being problematic in, to certain respects. Um, if you have opinions or wanna share, wanna be a part of it, um, uh, please add your name to the participant list. Uh, we're getting a uh, our first kickoff meeting going. Um, the time commitment should be relatively light. We will be um, leveraging some uh, a technical writer and uh, you know LF um, graphics teams um, to kind of do the do the dirty work. <laughs> so um, hoping that we can have a, a lot of uh, folks um, join us and and help with some of the outline and editing and um, and we can go from there. So uh, please please join us. All are encouraged. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. I will actually join this task force. I mean, as you may all know, or should all know, this has been, you know, the confusion about the the, the umbrella greenhouse kind of uh, picture has been discussed many times, brought up, and this, uh, this is our chance to actually help improve the situation. So I encourage, you know, well, maybe not, we maybe not want everybody on the task force, but, you know, it'd be nice to have a few people who are motivated enough to Try and make a difference. All right, thank you. Any other announcements from anyone? I I will I will interject a question. Then I don't know if anybody has the answer. So this is towards the staff. Uh, there's been a. Some of us were discussing uh, proposals to submit to the global forum, and there was the question about you know how many. How many submissions have been made? And I'll be more specific. There was this question, you know, there was this idea, oh, we could have a series of presentations on this global uh, general theme of interoperability. And you know, so we we're discussing, well, is that does that have any chance to be accepted? And uh, or you know, so I said, well, I think in the past there's been a lot of submissions, so it's not very likely we would be. <laughs> allocated a whole series of presentations. But uh, I was wondering if the staff has near input on that. You mean like like a track during the, the two, three days uh, we plan on interop? I don't know if I would call that a track, but uh, at least, you know, it was like we were talking about having two or three presentation and a panel. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, the submissions are coming in, uh, you know, I, I, I think, any quality submission is either going to get into this calendar, or get into the agenda, or frankly, be fodder for a lot of the other places we have to talk about things <laughs> and get presentations in the Hyperledger ecosystem. So we really would encourage 
I think people to uh, submit if there's if there's like a series of different talks um, or you think they build upon each other, submit them independently, and uh, I'm sure the program committee will look at them kind of in total and and make a good call on that front. Right. We're, we're we're almost ready to announce the program committee, um, uh, so that's that's well timed on this front. But yeah. Okay, Hawk, think... you heard that? Yep. Sorry, I just wanted to chime in. I think that the question really is, would each of those talks be uh, were evaluated separately and a submitter would get a feedback on, you know, three out of five are make sense, but two don't? Or should it be evaluated as a single submission? Uh, and then, you know, it has to be differently allocated in the program. And also there is a risk running, you're really running into a risk of declining it because some content was good, but not all of it. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, for us, it was mostly because, you know, if we were told there's no chance you can have that many slots, then we would frame things a bit differently to still cover the, the, the crux of the matter we want to cover. And, and so it's almost like, can we do this? And if not, we'll do that. <laughs> and, you know, just submitting yeah. and pieces and having some pieces accept that others not doesn't quite work. But I suppose we could adjust after. That's okay. Well, thank you for your the, input. I think we can yeah. deal with it. The, the, the real thing is that the program committee will be providing feedback on all of the talks. So I'm sure it can be just very flexible. And I would say submit the way that you want to submit and program yeah. committee will work with you on it. All right, thank you. Thanks for that uh, input. Hot, you heard that, right? Hot is the guilty. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, guilty, thanks, and I heard. Thanks for asking. <laughs> You're welcome. I figured it was an opportunity to get an answer right away, so. All right, so with that taken care of, if there's no other questions or announcements, let's go to the quarterly reports. There were two reports submitted, and um, one on grid, one on transact. I did, they were, they just, just submitted. So I, I will understand if not everybody has had a chance to look at them yet, but uh, nevertheless, uh, at least, you know, I, well, I want to ask if anybody has any questions already or comments they want to bring up at this point. And if not, I didn't see, I mean, the, the reports themselves didn't call for any specific, uh, issues to be brought up to the TSC, so I don't think there is anything specific for us to do or talk about in this regard. Yeah, and I look now and I see most people have already checked their boxes saying they reviewed it, so I think we're in pretty good shape. All right, so I don't see any hand raised. I will take it that we are in good shape. So let's get to the crux of this meeting. I see Rai is eager and already switched to that. So we received the request to uh, move the ARIES project from, uh, to, from incubation to active status. Um, I want to commend the effort from the project on putting a you know extensive report together. I don't think we've seen that quite you know, to that extent before. Very well done. And so I didn't see many comments on the on the wiki page, but uh, this is your chance. I know there was initially a little bit of back and forth, some specific with regard to the CII badges, and um, this has been taken care of. So does anybody have any questions or comments they want to make on this? Otherwise, I, maybe Stephen, you can take us through the you know high level crux of the of the the, the application. Um, yep, uh, you know Aries has been around for a year and a half. Uh, it was started in um, March of 2019. Um, the vision has evolved a little from what was put in in the original proposal, and I think that. Um, caused a, a, a delay in, in, in this request. We didn't quite know as a community, you know, what it would mean to be ready to go. Um, 
So it has, uh, Aries has at this point fewer shared components than we originally thought there would be. We thought there would be, uh, you know, a, this core um, single code base and a bunch of frameworks built on top of this core um, um, base. Uh, as it turned out, um, the core is the set of um, RFCs that define protocols and um, the actual implementations, the frameworks um, have been um, created more or less independently. Um, some sharing Indy as the core base, um, one in particular Aries Go um, being completely independent of Aries or of Indy, not using Indy at all. Um, as we move forward, um, that uh, that uh, will will adjust, and and those two are are merging together, and that'll probably happen in the next few months. But in the meantime, um, there's been a ton of of action, um, both inside the community in in building the components, and then outside the community using the components, just um, flat out taking the code and and building solutions, both um, POCs, production, and so on. So um, the state is such that um, it's pretty mature. And we're at a point where we definitely think there shouldn't be uh, that incubation tag on the, uh, on the project, but it should be active. And that's what this effort's been about. All right, thank you. So back to the TSC members. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Yes, Tracy, please. I move to allow Aries to move to active. I done. Hot. No second Tracy's proposal. Now you've raised your hands just to. <laughs> Move and second. <laughs> Let's not get too formal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have a, a call for vote. Um, how should we do that? I'll, I'll let's do it by uh, well, I guess we could use the raising hand since you seem to like this. You want to do that on the Zoom window? Everybody's favor can uh, thumb up. Wait, I lost this. Where is that button? I don't have the button to raise my hand. Uh, I keep seeing everybody raise their hand or thumbs up. This is like super cool. Could we not do this? <laughs> could, I, could I just do a roll call vote, please? Okay. Yes, sir. Angelo, Angelo, on the matter before the TSC, how do you vote? I second. Uh, okay. No, no, you have to approve or not. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I approve. Arno. Yes. Arun. I'm with it. I approve. Uh, Bow Wow. Yes, approve. Bobby. Yes, approve. Dano. Yes, approve. David. Yes. Uh, Gary is not able to answer. Grace. Approve. Hart. Yes. Maria. Yes. Uh, Nathan. Yes. Tracy. Yep. Troy. Yes. Uh, the matter before the TSC, uh, you know, passes with uh, two abstentions. Gary and Mark were out of the meeting, so they could not vote. Yep. No, that's cool. All right. Congratulations, guys. Thanks I'm glad so you much. Did. That's awesome. See, it was worth trying, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> I'm glad because I encouraged you to. I was like, come on, don't be so shy. Try. You might yeah. be surprised. <laughs> so I'm glad. This is great. I think it's well deserved. And, you know, as I've said before, the, the one thing that always blocks people or projects, I should say, typically is the diversity when we talk about, you know, having many different contributors from different, uh, you know, with different affiliations. And I think areas of all projects within Hyperledger is the largest diversity by far. So I think it's well-deserved. You clearly have a 
booming project. So keep up the good work. All right, so that's great. It didn't take very long. So let's uh, move on. Um, I wanted to go back to the project maturity uh, and slash badging um, proposal. So Dano put a proposal together quite a few weeks ago. Um, it's made of two parts. The, there is definition of badges itself, and then there is the process for, you know, uh, how the badges are being managed. And the, the second part had created a little bit of uh, concerns among some of us. And um, we discussed this on a call. And um, basically, Dano was asked to, to revise it to kind of make it a bit less, I don't want to say less formal, but less uh, maybe uh, procedural. And so to try to, you know, encourage collaboration as much as possible and try to, you know, even though things can go bad, it doesn't have to be all focused on, you know, how it's going to go bad and what we do when it's going bad. So uh, Dano did revise the process. And so I'll let you talk a little bit about that, Dano, if you will. So that's okay. the same page. Right, could you click on the process badging, project badging sub page? Yeah, right there, the link, right. Yep. So this was yeah, the revision I talked about. Um, so, you know, working in Ethereum and DeFi and Byzantine fault tolerant things, you tend to start to think from the worst case scenario and work backwards because that tends to be what happens. So I revised this from the opposite approach with the worst case scenario gets the least amount of text. Um, so it's still the same basic process we had before, um, just with less prescriptive description on what happens when things start to go bad. Um, the project still self-certify for the badges. Um, they put it in their quarterly reports, sticking with that idea for the cadence. Um, and you'll note when I updated the other page with the, um, with the badge frequencies, everything's either a year or perpetual. So going forward, when we add new badges, if there used to be a quarterly, if there used to be something more, more frequent than yearly, it should probably have some alignment to quarterly so that every year, like on a second quarter, everyone recertifies badges or they set some sort of pattern in their reports. They do a different one each, each week, I mean, each quarter. So one of the things I really liked about the Hyperledger Aries proposal is they provide a really good example of what I was thinking of when you self-certify and provide the evidence. Um, they listed the, the subpart and they provided the description of what they said and they had a link to go to it. And that is what I had envisioned in my mind when I said that these badges self-certify. And this can either be on a separate page or part of the quarterly reports. And again, this is done quarterly. And if everyone's happy with what's presented, you know, process ends here, your badge goes up. Uh, we believe the self-certifications, uh, we, we trust the projects to work well. The next step is discussion. And this is where I think things were change the most, um, ch changing the perspective of how you come in when you're not so certain about a self-certification. Um, the requirement is if anyone has who disagrees with it, they have to discuss it with the team, um, probably in one of their public forums, either on their, their, you know, on a video call or in a chat room or in their email list and, you know, discuss about it. And there's, you know, three outcomes that could come from that. Either, you know, either the badge could be withdrawn, the objection could be withdrawn, or there could be more evidence presented. Because a lot of these discussions, is a, it's a question of, is this the right kind of evidence we're looking for? Um, but like any mediation, there's a chance things may come to an impasse. Um, you know, there may be a, a dispute about, you know, some particular item where the, the team feels that they earned the badge and the person, you know, who, who's, who's challenging it, in essence, uh, disagrees. So the only step after that, they can't come to a mutual resolution. And the mutual resolution step have to be attempted first before they can do this is then whoever's challenging it can ask the TSC to rule on it. The TSC does not have to take it up. And I didn't write in any formal procedures on here that they, the TSC, when it's challenged, uh, handles how they're gonna, you know, describes how they're gonna do it rather than prescribing it ahead of time. And that's where a lot of the text from the previous one came from. And the general process is if, if it's challenged, if it goes to the TSC, um, the TSC, if they vote to take it away, it gets taken away, otherwise it stands. Um, and so there's no, you know, time frame about have to object to this amount of time or you have this amount of time to cure it or any sorts of windows like that. Um, you're just going to have to trust that the, the mood of the TSC is that they will handle it fairly. 
And if, if we're wrong, we can adjust um, stuff then. But, you know, really when it gets down to resolution, um, there has been some sort of a failure anyway. So, um, you know, it's going to be contentious anyway if it gets to that point. So there's, you know, I don't see the value, you know, we're not, we're not the, we're not the court system, we're not a mechanical system when it gets to this point of resolution. So there's probably, you know, TNC is probably going to have some of their own discussions in band and out of band. And if it gets to a vote, then things have really failed. But, you know, this is, uh, you know, sometimes it might happen. So and that's the end of the process there. And I think All there's right. a couple of things um, down the screen, a couple of bits about, can you scroll down for two more bullet points? Yeah, the, the issue about renewable and, and perpetual patches, about how frequently you get it. And then I, I struck through the original stuff, give a taste for people who view it to see what was the original proposal. Um, whole thing there is just struck through, like with the legislation. This would not go in um, the TSC, but it might, may or may not stay in the wiki. Yeah, no, thank you. And so on the other page, I know you did some reformatting cleanup, which, but it it's was very formatting. It, that's yeah. what I thought, right? It's only for yeah, there was there was one change that I think Tracy requested for the legal badge um, because you know licensing isn't oh, yes. too strict. If the if the governing committee if the governing if the governing committee approves a license exception, then you know you passed it. Obviously, can you go back to the other page, uh, Ray? And I think Grace has her hand up. Yeah, Grace. Hey, uh, thanks, Daniel. This is great, just first of all. But I just have one quick question on the badge process. So I think uh, I like the badges that you proposed as kind of our starting points. But I imagine uh -huh. maybe over time we'll, we'll add some new badges, uh, maybe diversity inclusion being one, maybe um, learning and development. I'm not sure. Uh, how would we account for uh, adding new badges to, um, uh, to the proposal? Would that just be a TSC decision? I'm just not sure I saw that in the doc. Um, I did not consider that in the doc. I would consider that to be a separate proposal to add it as an eligible badge. And there would be, these badges came almost entirely whole cloth from the active requirements and was a starting point. So I'm, I'm happy to add and remove before we go for the first pass, but I also expect in the future, more badges will be added and removed. There was discussion of a badge about responsiveness to issues that I think is a great one. That we should consider adding stuff that goes above and beyond what it simply takes to be active, um, and stuff like DNI and um, DEI and how quickly you respond to the issues aren't necessarily a requirement for an active project, but I think they are an important signal to the community. So I think it's a good question, Grace, but I, I do think the answer is yeah, people can make proposals that would go through the TSC. You say, hey, I would like to propose a new badge and you make a, and would the TSC could vote on that and and then it would be added if it's accepted. Yep, I mean, that makes sense, yeah. Thank you. And I don't think we need to have that written into this. That's for me kind of like what I would expect a uh, normal part of the process. Arun? Hey, um, quick question. So will will those objections by, let's say, contributors, will those be made publicly available? The what would be like, is that would, uh, the badges? I think you're talking about the pro badging process. If someone makes an objection, because the discussion has to be public, I would presume it would be public. I don't know if there'll be a formal form to fill out. I object on this grounds, and here's my standards, and I expect this level of jurisdiction, and I don't think we're going to go through that formality, but if you pay attention to the projects, you would see it. Does that answer your question? No. You okay with that? Or, I mean, I'm trying to understand what the... Hmm? No, the, the reason behind that was trying to understand. So, I mean, because the first step is to get involved with maintainers, mm -hmm. trying to see if, if the same things do not repeat now and then right so that was the kind of thing which i was that was the thought process which was going through in my mind okay yep and uh i saw so there was a, sorry go ahead Daniel. 
So if someone makes the same objection to multiple projects, maybe that's something we should bubble up to the TSC and push out to all the projects equally. Is that your concern? Similar objections, let's say it, uh, the objection is valid for three months and then similar objection comes again. So, oh, or maybe similar objection oh, comes yeah. for from some other people. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, you know, I also don't think, I mean, when, you know, at least speaking for myself, I tend to think when you talk like this, I, I think it seems to be pretty adversarial. But in fact, I think in reality, the most likely scenario is, you know, it's not going to be adversarial in nature. It's going to be just based on different understanding or expectations about what's behind the badge and how it should be implemented. And that's why I would hope for more, you know, cases where it's a friendly, uh, you know, fairly friendly uh, discussion. Say, hey, I don't think that should, you know, that qualifies because this or that. And then there may be misunderstanding or disagreement of views, you know, and, and say, well, I didn't think it was like this. And then you would take it to the TSC and the TSC can roll and hopefully we can clarify, uh, update the definition of the badges. And um, I, I would hope that we can, you know, refine the model as we move forward. And, but your point is good. I don't know how we prevent people from repeatedly, you know, um, object to some badge. Tracy. Yeah, so I, I think I put this in the other um, yeah. the other page, but I, I think you know if we can make the criteria completely objective, um, then we can probably do something whereby you know checking the LF analytics right to see if they fall within a range. So I included on the other page the DCI badging. Um, proposal that exists out there um, from chaos and you know they have a ranges uh, it's in the um, uh, it's in the the comments um, so uh, the it's probably the very last one right uh, so in here right they have different percentages of the requirements met to get the different things, very similar to the CII badge um, that the Aries folks should be familiar with, right? As far as you know, whether it's pending, passing, or you know, they exceed basically. Um, so you know, I I'm wondering, is there a way for us to make our badges such that we can look at the LF Analytics tool, get the result back uh, programmatically, and be able to issue the badge without somebody having to claim that they should get a badge, um, you know, and that makes it very objective and, and no kind of discussion back and forth as far as the, you know, challenges might be, might come up. I also really like the project encouragement of, you know, the badge could like be automatically unlocked. It would make a pleasant surprise. Yeah, so that, you know, I, I think for some badges, for sure, it should be pretty simple. I don't know if it works for all badges, but if we could do that, at least for some, that would already be, you know, reduce the f possible friction. But I don't know how feasible it is. Nathan, I saw you unmute there for a second. Yeah, um, I think there's at least a few badges we could probably do this way, though I don't know how hard the tooling would be. You know, if we could automatically unlock certain thresholds of contributors or certain organizational diversity badges just off the statistics that we have in the analytics site, it would make a really nice, pleasant surprise for the projects. And I think could serve as something that's quite encouraging. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the objectivity works both ways, right? Because it's, I mean, we saw it with Aries, for instance, they were, they didn't think they would qualify to move to active status, right? And we had to say, but wait, have you seriously considered that? <laughs> Maybe you'd be surprised. And, and, you know, it's similar here. You're going to have people who are, you know, more aggressive than others. There are people who are going to aggressively want to claim badges and others who will shy away and say, no, I, I don't think we qualify. <laughs> 
and there'll be some discrepancy because of that you know that's uh, that's the human factor that uh, you know unless you have tools that automate this you're going to have to deal with so i don't know i mean tracy i like the idea of having these kind of like you know different levels i my concern is unless it's automatic like you were, we were just talking about this adds yet another it makes it even more subjective i'm wondering if it doesn't which makes it even harder it's like well not only you're asking me whether i i you know i qualify or not but by how much if i'm already not sure about the answer asking me to which level makes it maybe worse i don't know yeah no agree i think it has to be automatic and um you know i think that there were some some attempts if you will from the lfx analytics folks right in our discussions to talk about you know here's the you know x number of criteria that uh, that we'd like to see and i think if we could um have them basically be able to validate certain criteria that we're interested in um that's that that's key All right. Any other comments or thoughts? I want to expand on what Tracy just said there. Um, as far as I know, Hyperledger would be the first. So this could be something that Hyperledger uh, pioneers. And because it would become available in Insights, it may be much more broadly adopted. Um, so I would really be uh, I think it would really be awesome if we could get these features into insights and possibly into the broader open source community. That's a good point. Do we have resources to develop something like this? Uh, Maybe know. that's a question for Brian. I don't know. I um I, I'd be I'd be willing to spend money, and I bet uh, I could find others at the Linux Foundation interested in spending money on automating parts of this. So um, can't can't say it's an open wallet, but yeah. Okay, well that's encouraging. At least you're not saying no, no, don't don't even think about it. Forget it. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this is what I was picturing, like here on your bat on your card page for your project, there could be a badge like right here. Yeah. And then that would spread to other projects, I would hope. Anyway. I have to say, I mean, you know, having a tool also, it, uh, I mean, one of my concerns about the proposal, I really like the proposal and thank you, Dino, for, you know, putting the, uh, put the proposal together. I, I, I like it. I think it makes sense. It would be, you know, in my opinion, it's progress from what we have uh, today. My only concern is, the cost of maintenance of those badges we're putting on the projects. And here, I would, you know, like to hear a little bit, you know, for sure, I wouldn't want us to just say, yep, we're going to impose that on all the projects, just suck it up. Because I, I'm afraid their maintainers are going to ba react badly and say, oh, thank you, TSE. Now we have to do all this bureaucratic crap. <laughs> And they may see that as a you know so something the distracting. Intent was, the intent was to streamline this and slipstream it in with the quarterly reports. Yes. So I mean they really have to do bureaucratic crap. We're just giving them an objective standard to say, well, here's some things you can report on rather than these questions about well, what do you have to ask the TSC that are objective and provide actual numbers for uh, not numbers, but necessarily more more solid feedback as to help with the project rather than are you healthy? Yeah, no, I hear you. And, uh, you know, I'm talking, I can talk both sides of that, <laughs> of that uh, argument. Uh, Grace has her hand up. Yeah, I think, um, I, you know, I'd, I'd be excited to try this out. I, I think there's always ways to improve and iterate. I think this is solving for one of the biggest uh, challenges or criticism that we get is, you know, incubation and active really don't mean what you think they mean in the public. Uh, yeah. So being able to say, you know, actually, like, this is how we're evaluating how um, projects are, you know, embedding in the quarterly report, I think is a great idea and, and create some system around it. 
do I think um, we'll have to iterate a little and maybe in, in three, six months say, okay, what worked, what didn't, you know, let's iterate a little. I think that's, that's great. But I think um, this really sets us on the right path, if that makes sense. So, yes. and um, so just want to kind of keep that in mind of kind of the problem we're solving. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I, I, you're absolutely right. So I think that's correct. Angelo. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Arno. I, I was feeling the fall. I was feeling the following. If you are if you are giving out uh, um, objective criteria to assign these badges, um, at this point, what the problem to me becomes more uh, um, these criteria uh, th themselves. I mean, if you have a, a clear way to compute a given uh, a given badge then why do we need to provide anything at all? I mean, in the sense that we, we just put out the criteria for which we, certain, we think certain badges make sense and how to compute them, how to compute this criteria, then it's up to the project if they want to publish this, uh, the, they want to get this criteria uh, if they think that this badge will make their project better. Why we should compute this criteria for them? I mean, we, we should only define what the criteria is and uh, um, the algorithm to compute it. Yeah, so, so, so uh, well, there are two things in what you say. I mean, I, I think there's value in having badges that show what the outcome of the evaluation is, whether they should be forced onto everybody or whether we can leave that as some a voluntary activity from, for the projects. I don't know, that's an interesting idea. I, so there, there is a question now for us is that, you know, what I'm not sure about is I, I can see that, I mean, does anybody think we should just not do any of this? Seems like people who have been speaking are more or less in support of this. Say, yeah, let's keep working on this. Um, I, I would be happy to, to say, yes, let's approve this. At the same time, you know, I, we have a bunch of questions that have been raised that for which we don't have an answer yet. So there's like the tooling aspect, can we make some of this automatic? We're not gonna have an answer of this about this right away. Uh, do we start manually? And then if there's a tool that comes along, then at some point we can say, hey, now you can stop doing that manually, just use the tool. Do we want to say, okay, projects go ahead and start implementing this? Or do we say, that's the rule of the law now, the rule of the land. Or do we say, let's try this, you know, let's give ourselves some trial period and say, hey, for the next six months, people should start working with those badges, see what happens. I don't know. I'm just speaking out loud, thinking out loud here. Tracy. Um, so I guess I might speak against this uh, at the moment because I think if we do something like this, it potentially stops us from moving forward with something that is automated. Um, but I guess, you know, two questions that I have. One, do we have any projects on the call right now that would be willing to try all this and see how painful it is? Um, and then, you know, if there is, great. Um, but I, I, I'm a little leery to force this on everybody at the moment when we don't know of the total overhead that it's going to cause yeah yeah that's a bit what i was thinking so thank you arun hi so i'm in favor of of reducing the burden on on project reports as you i mean i would i would prefer to try out if possible to automate before we push it okay Angelo. Yeah, just to say that I'm personally against any paternalistic approach. We should not tell uh, the, the, the projects uh, that we should not force the project to do this, uh, these things. We should put it, if we think that the badges can help, that should contain an automatic incentive for the projects to say, oh, we should, uh, we should compute out the metrics that allow us to, to put the badge in place. So once the TSC gives us the definition of the, the badges, and now to compute the metrics, if they really make sense, there will be an automatic incentive for the project. Makes sense what it means that who wants to use 
this project out from from the community, from the from uh, uh, from the community or whatever a company wants to use this project, uh, it will have an incentive of looking at the, uh, it will look at these badges. If it does, doesn't find these badges, it will not choose the project. So you see, we have an automatic uh, incentive mechanism that is in put, put in place without being paternalistic. It's just a competition in in uh, in place. That's it. Yep. No. Sounds good. Thank you. Anyone else? I think you know. So what I'm hearing is, uh, you know, not you know, people are kind of supportive of the the proposal, but not if, you know, we are clearly not ready to just declare yes, we'll adopt it willy nilly and force it on everybody yet. I I think it seems like we agree. Maybe a trial period would be interesting to do. So. Yeah, that that I think Tracy's question was which project is volunteering to do this. I mean, we don't have to have an answer now, but do we know of any yet? Basically, we'll do it on their next quarterly report. Cool. Dave, maybe we can try do that for Fabric. Put you on the spot. Dave, Dave Vaynert is not responding. I'm interested in looking into it for fabric, so I'll, I'll, I can try and give it a shot. I tentatively volunteer. I may need some help from my colleagues there, but uh, I think it's something that I'm interested in doing. And obviously, you know, the door is not closed. So if other projects are interested in uh, trying it out, I think they should do that. So we can basically inform the projects that there is this system we are developing. We're interested in feedback of about you know what it what it actually means to 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 implement this proposal, and then we can based on the feedback we get and the experiment, you know, um, we can rediscuss this. Does that sound like a reasonable way forward, Dano? Yeah, that sounds reasonable. And you know, because of my workload, I don't have time to rework the badges to put formal um, automated systems in to, to judge them or even set the standards for those. So if people are interested in seeing those, feel free to propose them. I think that's something we need is if, if you feel that the automated numbers are important and what those numbers should be, please help specify those. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I, I mean, uh, formally on that front, there's no doubt that, you know, I'm pretty sure as we implement those, we are going to come up with questions and say, oh, what, what about this? What about that? And we'll have to refine the definition. And I mean, Grace said it earlier, I think we will have to iterate or for a while at least before we can settle on something that actually makes sense where people are not left with a bunch of questions I mean, we've seen it even with the executoria of the uh, of incubation, right? People have questions, say, well, what does that mean exactly? And we had uh, some, we made some changes over time. So I think here it'll be the same. Okay, I'm happy to leave it at that for now. Any other comments, final comments on this? Otherwise I think we're done with that. And that's all I had on the agenda. Um, I don't know if there's anything else anybody wants to bring up now. We have almost 15 minutes left. But otherwise, I, you know, I'm happy to close the call earlier and, and ask everybody to spend the next 15 minutes that they won't have to spend on the call and in looking into some of the pending issues we have. There's a whole bunch of issues that we have raised not all of them actually, and maybe that's a mistake, I should capture that, but you know, we still have uh, several items that came out of the SIG uh, discussion that Tracy had that are left pending, need uh, you know, work. There is the, uh, just off the top of my head, there is the, uh, the story about the sponsors for the labs. So there, there's a bunch of things that have been raised and for which we need like people to chime in and help out making progress so that we can come to closure on those. 
So I'm happy to close the call now and uh, you know, direct all of your attention to those items. Pick, pick and choose whichever topic is you know, of interest to you. Just try and make progress. Does it sound good for everybody? All right, I'll take silence as a yes. Okay, so let's close the call on this then.